Hi friends, welcome back to our digital classroom again. We are in the chapter 2, continuing with about the land, soil, water and so on. Yesterday we studied about natural vegetation and the wildlife and today let us continue with that conservation of natural vegetation and wildlife. Yesterday we saw how important it is to have this natural vegetation and the wildlife. They are part and parcel of this ecosystem. If they disappear then we can be sure that the nature will be less again they will be because they are also holding that important duty performing that important duty in carrying out the balance of the ecosystem so that shows how important it is how great is the role that they play so we cannot just close our eyes and say whether they die or exist i have nothing i don't have to worry we really need to worry if we find the animal species is uh, becoming lesser and lesser or the plant species is becoming lesser and lesser we need to really worry because our own existence will be threatened and therefore for our own existence it is very much necessary that they also should exist therefore if you want to continue to exist on this earth we have to make sure that the animal species as well as the plant species uh, continue to exist on this earth so we need to take care of them and we need to protect them we need to do our level best in order to bring them to existence and help them to continue to exist now let us see what is the importance of the forest what are they doing for us we know forests are our wealth a country without forests they are poor they may have other things but if they don't have forests then they are poor why we say a country without forests is poor because the forest gave a shelter to animals and together with the forest and the animals the ecosystem is maintained if there is no forest then the animals cannot survive they have no habitat and they will get disappear they'll get extinguished and or they will be extinct and slowly slowly the ecosystem the nature becomes poorer and poorer so the forests are a real wealth for us because they are the one who are serving the animals for us and sometimes we see this because of the change of the climate and because of the human interference both the trees and the animals they are losing shelter or they are losing place for existence first of all it is because of the change of climate sometimes the climate becomes hotter and hotter and slowly slowly the trees die away and the animals also will suffer because if the trees die off then they have no shelter there therefore it is necessary for the animals that trees should exist so if the climate is very bad then the trees can be destroyed so that is one reason and another thing is human interference the forest can disappear because of human interference we go for cutting down the forest and we go for taking 
out different things from the forest and we go on cutting and destroying it cutting for firewood cutting for timber cutting for making house or cutting the forest in order to cultivate there so we interfere into the forest for our different different works for different different activities for our different different needs in that process the area of the forest is getting reduced and as a result we will be in danger the tree species will be in danger and the animal species will be in danger and slowly slowly they get extinct so that should not happen we should take care that these things are not taking place in our own little way we can do something so that the plants will survive and if the plants survive the animals also will survive under the shelter of the plants and will go on and our life will be more comfortable and our life will be more richer we can be sure that then we say because of the human interference the forest and the animals the trees and the animals they suffer we can see the human forces and the natural forces human forces it is deforestation is there we as i already said we go on cutting the trees and we destroy the forest then there is soil erosion because of our human activities because of our uh, human activities on the soil the soil erosion takes place as the water is flowing down it carries away the top soil and uh, reduces leaves the soil with a less fertile soil the top of the soil is lost and it is no more useful for cultivation later so we need to make sure that we work on the land in a way that does not support soil erosion and we carry our constructional activities human beings as the population is increasing they go on using the forest land for making their houses or making their cultivation field or cutting the trees for their purpose for making something all these things they engross into the forest and they go on doing it they carry out all these and different activities and one of the activities is natural forces are also they like forest fires you can see in your textbook the newspaper uh, reports are there about fire in California several days the fire was raging there and so many animals were killed burned alive in that fire wildfire and almost all the trees in that area also got burned and destroyed so such kind of things natural forces also taking place to destroy the tree species and the animal species and recently also you must have heard that in Brazil there was wildfire and for so many days it was going on burning and several animals got killed even in Australia the wildfire took place and so many animals got killed thousands of animals got killed so all this taking place because of the forest fires especially in this dry season when all around are dry leaves it is possible that fires take place it also can take place due to the lack of concern of human beings we go and throw some fire there it will catch fire but if you go on uh, throwing our waste near the uh, forest slowly slowly it will get heated up and it is possible there can be a spark coming from there and it is also possible 
from the natural forces like thundering and lightnings fire gas the trees and then spread the fire so if it is from the lightning then we can't help anything but certainly we can make sure that this kind of uh, incidents don't take place because of our carelessness because of our lack of concern for the earth and for the rest of the humanity so we need to take care and we need to really look forward in helping the nature to enrich itself and to become stronger and stronger and play a vital role in balancing the ecosystem then we also have other reasons how this species is destroyed people go for illegal trade and so on they catch the animals or they cut the trees especially precious wood like sandalwood and other precious wood they cut and they go and sell it so they do trade illegal trade or hides hides means the skin of the animals and they like the nails the teeth the horns and the feathers and so on because all these things there is a high demand in the international market and people who sell it they get a very high profit and therefore they try to risk the life of the animals they try to risk the uh, environment they try to risk the uh, nature ecosystem in order to serve their own selfish purposes and they want to become richer and richer at the expense of the nature at the expense of the animals and the trees plants and so on so because of this human greediness because of this uh, human activities we can say the animals that are affected mostly in india it is the tiger lion elephant deer black buck crocodile rhinoceros snow leopard ostrich peacock and so on these are the animals and the birds that are facing extinction facing uh, for facing the serious threat of their life because these animals parts have got very high demand in the international market and people try to kill them and take out their parts and export into other countries and involve in the illegal trade so let's say once again the animals that are facing the threat for their life first of all it is tiger then lion then elephant then deer then black buck black buck you must have when we hear the black buck we may think about bed bug it is not the bed bug but it is a black buck it is a kind of deer you can see in your text the picture of black buck is given there is a deer with long horns very beautiful so they are also in danger then crocodiles and uh, rhinoceros and uh, snow leopard ostrich and peacock and so on so when these animals are be hunted slowly slowly they face extinction they face threat for their life and slowly slowly their number is reduced and then the earth will be uh, devoid of them the earth will be missing them missing that species and the future generations they will be able to know them only from the picture they will not be able to uh, see them or they will not be able to uh, watch it, them with their own eyes so what is the solution we may ask what can we do how can we preserve this very precious species of animals and with trees so what we can do is we can increase the awareness most of the people especially the illiterate ones they go to the forest whenever they are free they go and shoot down the animals in order to make them their food this is because of their ignorance 
they do not know what a precious species they are killing and destroying so we need to make them aware that these animals are very precious and they are the asset of our nature they are the partners with our human beings in supporting the ecosystem we need to make the people aware about it and make them decide make them to pledge that they will not destroy the wild animals and then it is from our own part what we can do is to create awareness but from the government side also they have to do something the government you know they try their level best in order to increase the number of species and to provide protection for them for example the government has built national parks wildlife sanctuaries and so on in order to preserve uh, these animals so people they are sheltered in the national parks and the wildlife sanctuaries so people can go there and see them people go and watch them how beautiful they are so it is government who is making this arrangement and also we need to preserve the lakes the water uh, areas wet areas at present what the people are doing is they go on uh, filling up everywhere the lakes the valleys the water uh, areas and they fill up and they go on constructing houses and buildings and so when we do this the animals the water species they are they cannot survive they die off the animals that are living in the water they cannot they have nowhere to go they die because they can survive only in the water so the government has to take steps that people do not destroy or they do not misuse the areas that are meant for the wildlife the animals for the species water species and so on and due to this human interference like deforestation filling up the water places and so on the animals they are losing their habitat they are disturbed and so many species are on the verge of extinction it is all because of our human interference that we don't care for them we just care only for us and we think only about ourselves and so the animals are affected and their life comes to an end because of our misuse of freedom because of our interest because of our interest only for ourselves so we need to uh, learn to educate ourselves to convince ourselves and also to teach others to convince others so that people can uh, enjoy the beauty of this nature having a lot of animals having a lot of uh, plant species on this earth and they are supporting this ecosystem then what action can we do we may ask what action can we make we said what government can do then we also can say that we also can participate and collaborate with the government and governments uh, late later or lastly government has um, instituted or established programs like awareness programs like social forestry so government invite the people try to give them and tree saplings and try to make them the importance of trees and encourage them to go and plant the trees in and around their houses and other uh, free places then government arrange vanama hall sawa vanama hall sawa means festival of the forest so in order to encourage the people make them aware about the importance of trees government even arrange festival of the forest and so there may be people who are not interested in all these things so we must also encourage them we must also encourage them to come forward and participate in these things then at a regional and community level school children should be encouraged so we are all encouraged 
in order to preserve the forest the wildlife and so on so if you see a beautiful flower don't just plug and destroy it don't just think that you want to enjoy the beauty let it be there so that you can enjoy the beauty as well as others also can enjoy the beauty so we have that natural tendency to take it for ourselves and that should be discouraged and we should encourage instead of uh, destroying we must build we must plant the trees then the children also should be encouraged in bird watching you know bird watching when we sit in a quiet place and without any noise the birds will come around the trees they'll start singing they'll start chirping and they start flying around and some of the birds have got beautiful attractive colors and that is really interesting so beautiful so children should be encouraged to sit somewhere quietly in the forest side or in the uh, uh, nearby trees and enjoy watching the trees very often what happens is we are encouraged to shoot the birds we will be always having weapons to shoot the birds and destroy them so that should not be we should be encouraged to watch them then we must be encouraged to visit nature camps to help them to appreciate habitat of various species so the nature camps where a lot of tree species are there or animal species are there we can visit them and we can appreciate how beautiful they are and so on then these are the things that we can do in the national level from our country by our government and its citizens then at international level also we can do something so many countries have passed laws against killing of animals and having illegal trade of the animals and birds and trees and so on so that is the step taken by the world leaders they have banned the killing and killing of birds and trades of animals and birds so if anyone is doing illegal trade in the animals and birds then they can be arrested and they can be prosecuted and punished so in india uh, certain animals are named who are not to be in the list of poaching or we are not allowed to kill these animals that are in the list they are lions tigers deers elephants peacocks and so on so if you kill any of these animals then it is illegal and you will be punished and you will be even put into jail you may have to pay fine and so on that is the help that is taken by the step that is taken by our government in order to protect the animals and the species tree plant species and so on then in the international level there was also a convention called CITES C I T E S and it has been established so that the endangered species can be protected and we can ban the trade of illegal illegal trade of these species so there is also a small column is given at the bottom of that page do you know there it is mentioned about more about the association or the convention called sites so what is the full form of sites this convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora so that is a full form of science so people are not allowed to do trade in this endangered species they are already endangered and very few are left and if they do trade or business in this then they can be arrested and they can be prosecuted so you can read by yourself and see what are the uh, things or number of animals and the plants that are included there so roughly around 5000 species of animals 
in 28,000 species of plants are protected. So this convention they have agreed to protect around 5,000 species of animals and around 28 species of plants will be protected and people will not be allowed to cut those trees or kill those animals or to have any business or trade with them. So that is a step taken by the international society in order to protect the environment. Then from this we can say the conservation of plants and animals is the moral duty of every citizen. We cannot just wash our hands and say I don't know anything, it is none of my business, I am not doing anything. That is not enough. It is the duty and responsibility of every person. It is a moral responsibility that we can say. Ethical means moral moral responsibility just as we obey the religious laws we obey god we fear god and we try to help others and so on all that is morality we are human beings and we have got morality so not only towards human beings but towards the nature the animals the uh, plants towards them also we have got moral responsibility so as a citizen we have got responsibility to take care of the rich variety of fauna and flora so that they can continue to live in their habitat we do not disturb them and we do not encroach them and we do not think about our selfish plants we allow them to stay on in this planet so that they can help us in return in protecting and supporting and balancing the ecosystem and they will continue to help us continue to support us to make this ecosystem more and more clean more and more pure and we live together in co we together coexist so we wind up the class today and we thank you all for listening to me and hope that you have learned about the species both animal and the plants and you must have taken a decision I suppose that you will do your level best in order to protect these animals and the plants and make this world a better one thank you have a nice day